We love it. You know, the women will always know how to get it done. Man, five amazing sources of inspiration and insights, right? Absolutely. All right, Sport <laughs> Beach, here we go. We're going to take another turn. For the first one-on-one -on -one Sport Beach conversation, we're honored to bring to the stage five-time Grand Slam. Say it again. Five-time Grand Slam champion and current entrepreneur and investor, Maria Sharapova. Yeah. And Maria, and Maria will be joined by Stagwell, my good friend, and she's got a birthday this week, Stagwell's Global Chief Content Officer, Shannon Pruitt. Woo! Have fun. Good Take to it see away, you. ladies. Hello, everyone. Wow. I've never been good on morning. a stage this close to the I know, water before. I know. so nice. It's quite nice. We're making it very difficult for y'all to justify <laughs> that you're here for work. <laughs> yes. Just saying. I don't think I can go back to a normal stage after this. <laughs> I know, this. I know. You're going to have to put this and be like, listen, <laughs> okay. is there a beach oh, really? or no? Yes. With overlooking yachts. Yeah, we're um, in con. Oh, my gosh. So, Ryan did a lovely job of introducing Maria. We're so thrilled. I am personally so thrilled to much. interview you, not just for your competitive career in tennis, but really also what you're doing now, post-career, you. your competitive career. Thank you. So, um, I don't know how much everybody knows about, I mean, obviously you're one of the most celebrated, covered athletes, female athletes of all time, which is amazing. Um, but you have such an interesting journey, right? Yes, um, crazy journey. Crazy journey that I think, you know, the truth is, is you were competitive on the court, but you have to be so competitive in your head and your yes. heart, right? Every yes. part of your body. And I think it'd be really interesting if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about that journey and how yeah. that informed your competitive spirit, not yeah. only Ryan said, right, winning Wimbledon at yes. 17 and five Grand Slam titles, yes. but like, yes. please share. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone's story um, begins at the victory lap, you know, holding the trophy. I think everyone's journey begins, you know, from your childhood, the, your, the way you're brought up, those lessons, uh, you know, on the court for me personally. Um, I started playing tennis, I was four years old. My dad enjoyed it, it was, it was fun for him. I was born in Siberia. Um, I never thought that this you know, little girl, my family never thought that their little daughter would make it to the center court at the French Open. Um, and yeah, humble beginnings. Look, I, I came to the United States as a five-year-old. I went to the Nick Voluntary Tennis Academy. I got a scholarship and you think that that's success, but then it takes years and years of practice, of grinding, of a lot of losing. I think losing sets you up a lot for success and for victories. Um, and I got to compete and play. I didn't see my mom for the first two years, which was she couldn't get a visa to the state, so that was difficult. So all those, you know, all those stories I think shaped my character, shaped um, you know my my journey. And um, you know, it's it's nice to be able to look back. It's it's rare because now now I have an 11 month old. I do a lot of work in business, and it's, you know, I, I don't do so many panels, but when I do, it's nice to be able to kind of to look back and to, to look at all the people that were involved in your journey and that were part of it to help you bring you here. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, it's also interesting, right? You were discovered at Martina Navatilova's tennis camp, yes. right? Yes. Um, and the fact that you didn't see your parents, you, you got here three years before your parents, yes. right? And yes. they came with $700 in their pocket. Yes. I mean, yes. how incredible is that? I, I, there, there were so many moments where you, you think you're not going to make it, where you think you're taking the wrong turn. And it, it's, it's one of those journeys that when, when someone says, oh, I have a daughter that plays tennis, um, and she's very young, and she wants to be just like you, you think of the paths and, and the roads and, the, and the, where you turned right and where you turned wrong. And you think, wow, they're going to have to make so many decisions to get to the top. And it's a long one, but if you do make it, it's, it's really worth it. I love that because you are obviously a hero to so many, right? Little girls, adults, <laughs> humans. Thank you. Um, which is amazing. But you're doing that also now kind of in a new context, right? Post-competitive, on-the-court career. Yep. Um, and you are an investor, a board member for Montclair, which is a client of ours, of Assemblies, okay. which is very exciting. Yes. Um, so, well, we're, part, we're thrilled you're we're, part of the family. We work together. Part of the family. <laughs> um, and your mother. Um, and you have a quote on mariasharapova.com, which is yes. your lifestyle site, health and wellness, beautiful. Um, it's by Thomas Edison, which says, many of life's failures are experienced by people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Right. And what does that feel like to you kind of in your everyday life as you, you know, you are still, like you said, you don't do a lot of panels, yeah. but you are an investor, a board member, a mother, yeah. 
a you know a person in your family, a person in your life, right? How does that influence you every day? I think what, what's interesting about that quote is when you're holding up a trophy, um, even though in that moment the t context is about victory and winning, personally, it, w it always, those moments always took me back to where, I, like where I really had to dig deep, where I had to grind it out, where it wasn't pretty, where not many people were watching. And in those moments is when you're creating victories. And so that when I just said like losing sets you up for for those big wins, I truly, truly believe it because when you're losing is actually when you get back to the drawing board, when you think about all the ways that you can improve yourself and your game and your team, you really have to, like very difficult conversations with people you know, sitting with you um, at a dinner table to say, we didn't do well today, what went wrong? What could we possibly be doing better next time. And I think that sets you up for success, but it's a really hard conversation. And when I look at the, the team players that were part of my team and that helped me grow up to become champions, it was the people that I chose that I wanted to, that I would feel comfortable losing in because it's the moments of vulnerability, it's the moments of finding your game and yourself and your, your, your mental strength again. Um, and it's those people that we all know everyone can celebrate with a glass of champagne or glass of rosé as, as they would in con. But, um, but it's the moments when you're really down, like who is that person sitting next to you? Who's your coach? You know, who's your friend that's going to help you lift you up? It's so true, right? The people that will sit with you in it are the people that make Absolutely. such a difference in your life Absolutely. on and yes. off the court, right? True. Um, so true. <laughs> But I think, you know, it's interesting, this idea of team. We're here. We're obviously in a sports environment, yes. right? We are in an assembly of agencies at Stagwell. We're talking a lot about team um, and collaboration. How has that, maybe even that experience that you just shared, yeah. informed kind of how you are going into, I mean, you're doing so much amazing work in entrepreneurship and mentoring of women. Yeah. You know, talk a little bit about kind of what are you doing right now, yeah. you know, and, and how that kind of spirit of, being with people in the stuff that's hard, right. um, how that is translating into what you're doing now. Yeah, it was really interesting. I, I, when, I was, when I was young and I left the court, whether it was practice or a match, and I went back to my hotel room, I, I had so much free time. And I was a very young, curious girl. So I would read, I would read about how the Four Seasons started, how it was one of the first luxury hotel groups in the world. I would read about Jerry Weintraub, one of the biggest agents, producers in the world. And I, don't, I, I, w I must have been 16, 17 years old, but I was so intrigued by these stories of how they turned something, an idea, creation, into something that was successful. And I think that's when I got that like business bug where I was like, wow, there's, there's so much more than being an athlete. But at that time, like in 2002, 2004, it wasn't very popular to be more than one thing. It wasn't like just by being a tennis player, that was enough. Like that, in the, for, uh, from the perspective of, of journalists or headlines, like being a champion on the court was enough. You didn't need to do more. And if you did, they didn't take you seriously. And I, not that I wanted to prove that I could do other things, but I actually wanted to prove myself that I was intrigued and curious to learn and grow into other things. So I became an investor fairly early early on where I said, um, I, I knocked on the door of a brand called Supergoop. It was an SPF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the only SPF that right. I could play with. They're an exceptional company. They had five employees at the time. And I said, I don't need, any, I don't need a guaranteed paycheck, but I want to help you grow. Um, I want to help you shape the future of what SPF means. And I met with Holly Thaggard. And last year, 16 months ago, they sold to Blackstone for $750 million. They still own 25% of the company. And that was my first, like meaningful entry into what an equity deal looks like. And from then on, um, yeah, that, that's been a huge, huge passion of mine. That's such an incredible story. And so interesting, right? Because your curiosity sort of fueled you into the space. And then, but, you know, kind of back to the quote, right? Like you went and knocked on their door and you're like, here's how I can help you. And by the way, not not all of these are like success stories. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> Back to there losing. are some that don't open. <laughs> Back to losing. Um, yes, I remember someone asked me to invest in, in in a company that had two different applications for the user and 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 for the fan. 
And I was like, I don't, and someone convinced me that this was gonna work and I invested a big chunk, a big paycheck and, <laughs> and it didn't and it still haunts me till this day. Um, so for every success stories, there are plenty that, that don't work out and I think that's, that's important to mention it. But I think it was just the bug of, of believing that the presence, the international presence that I had, I had a voice and it was a product that I just, I absolutely loved and, it, and that's what it started with. It wasn't about the money. It started with the product that I loved and I used every single day. It's so interesting. We do a lot of, you know, we'll do like branded content deals and partner deals, right? And the first question is like, do you actually use this product? Yeah. Right? That's my first question is like, here's the address. Please send me the product. I want to live with it for weeks. I want to spend time with it. I want to give it to my family members, to my friends. I want to hear their feedback. I want to give yeah. you my feedback. Yeah. And then we can talk about a partnership. Because I think that it's, you know, equity is a word that, that's now become a very fancy, a very popular word. But in my opinion, equity is ownership. It's like your ownership of your career. If you're in business with someone that is a young founder, um, Natalie was just on stage with Bala Bengals. I was an early investor in, in, in Bala Bengals alongside Mark Cuban. Um, and to see them grow in the last three years and to help shape their brand I mean, if they call me at 5 a.m. and said, we need your quote on Good Morning America at 4 a.m., I'll do it yeah. because I'm, I'm, I'm an owner. Like, I want to be part of this journey. Yeah. Is it, um, I think that's an interesting, right? Equity is an interesting transition yes. uh, into, you know, <laughs> equity in women's sports and the women's sports business, right, yes. um, is a hot topic. It really is. Right? And yes. which is amazing. Rightfully um, so. Rightfully yes. so. I mean, I started in the sports business. There was no representation, basically, unless you were an athlete, yes. essentially, right? And very few and far between. Yes. And so, but now, like, from fields to courts, you know, to boardrooms, yes. there's a lot of momentum actually be being fueled by media mm -hmm. and brands, right? Yes. Sitting here at this festival yes. um, amongst these constituents, actually. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is focused around the acceleration of visibility, the acceleration of programming, the acceleration of opportunity in pay and everywhere else. What is that meaning? What, how is that meaningful? Like, if you reflect back on your own journey, how, how do you think that's meaningful? And also, for almost like the emotional mindsets and outcomes mm -hmm. that are associated for the younger generation right. coming behind, right? Younger, right. younger, younger yeah. girls and women. Yeah, the ecosystem of visibility is getting larger and larger. But if your core mission is to be a champion, then and you, and that what that is what your goal is, you have to wake up believing and doing everything you can to be a champion. Then everything else is the cherry on top, right? The the ambassador deals, the equity relationships, the social media, um, NFT projects, what whatever it is that's that's an interest of yours. What I do like about the, so many opportunities is that you get to understand what works for you and for what doesn't. So there are several new revenue streams that athletes are, um, you know, are utilizing. Yeah. But it's also, in some ways, a distraction from your core mission, right? So because ultimately what makes you the most money and what gains you success is, is victories and on the field in which you're at. Now, a victory doesn't mean holding a Grand Slam champion right, trophy. There's many different versions of, of what a victory looks like, but I do think that that focus on that one thing is, is so, it's it, to implement that first and then work on the entire ecosystem and also have an amazing team that says no more than yes. <laughs> right, listening and saying no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pushing you. Yes. Right? Yes. Which is amazing. And I, I think, think saying no yeah. opens up opportunities to the right opportunities, right? That's Not right. overexposing yourself and your image and your brand, doing the right things at the right time. Um, timing and life <laughs> is everything. Um, but even more so when you are an active athlete, you know, when you're pursuing big dreams. Um, and that, that should, you know, constantly be your focus. Yeah. And how do you infuse that? So, you know, maybe a little context for some of this. Um, you know, I, you're obviously investing, but like the mentorship program that you're sort of, de you know, that you're developing, how are you investing some of these, you know, this wisdom, yeah. this support into nurturing? Because again, you have to believe in them, right? You have to believe in, you know, they always say like in private equity, right? You buy the founder, not the, not the business yeah. all the time. Yeah. So like, how does that work for you as you make those choices? Yeah, I mean, selfishly, I, I also learn so much from being a mentor myself because I get to be in a room with a completely different perspective. 
Some are new or green to a business. Some are younger. Some have a different vision on style, on design, on execution. And it also helps shape and inform me being, you know, in my mid-30s and not, not exactly understanding or, you know, feeling like I know what a 16 or 20-year-old would love or would like. I think it helps build my perception um, of what's working in culture and what's not. So even my role at Montclair, I get to sit in a room with incredibly intelligent people um, that get to teach me lessons. So not only is my international input um, there, but I also feel like I sit there for five hours in a boardroom and I get to listen and I absorb and then I take all the tidbits um, of education and I apply it to all the different um, other aspects of my career. Yeah. I think, you know, I feel like mariasharapova.com is a little bit of a, like, it flows through, things flow through you into the other elements of your life, it seems yeah. like. Yeah, I, I think beautiful. Like health and wellness has always been like this, this idea that it's not just about being a hardcore athlete, right? It's applying other things in your life where women, you know, we want to feel good. We want to feel confident in what we're wearing and what the products that we're using um, and how we apply our mind and our mindset um, to a very, to a new world, right? To a very challenging world as, as a mother, as a partner, um, as a child. So, yeah, the, like our society can pull us in different directions. Um, and what is it in your life that grounds you? I think that that's... Ultimately, it's a little bit of soul searching, <laughs> but but ultimately that never stops, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I'm learning that lesson <laughs> that it doesn't stop. <laughs> yeah, it just keeps going. <laughs> yes, but that I I appreciate that. That's the beauty of yeah. life. Work in progress. Yeah, I did get a great life hack <laughs> off of MariaSharapova.com on organization. <laughs> I was like, this seems useful. I should do this uh, in oh, all gosh. of my free time. Um, no, I think, so, you know, I think as you think about what's next, right, for you, um, I know you were doing some work in, like, NFTs and things yep. like that as well. How are you navigating some of these new spaces, right, yeah. um, in a world that seems to be flexing and bending and doing all these things all the time, right? Yeah. Um, and also, you're a high-profile person, right? So there's obviously also then a lot of focus that comes with that. Like, how are you navigating some of that space? Um, there's no right or wrong answer. I think it's being, I'm quite diligent and, and picky on the things that I say yes to, especially once you become a mother. I think your time is, is, is extremely valuable, and I've found that leaving the house, I definitely think twice, even though I have, you know, my, my parents are there, and we have amazing support, and my husband's incredible, um, you know, with, with helping with all the duties. But when I leave, I'm like, what is the purpose and what am I going to achieve today? How is that going to help my mind? How is that going to help my business? How is that going to help my outlook? Um, there's no uh, simple answer. I have a few, few beautiful projects in the works. I'm still um, mostly in the health and wellness space, um, particularly with a, with a hotel that we're announcing um, in September that's been in the works for a long time. Um, so I still do a lot of work with, with Evian. I was a global ambassador for them for many years. The board roles, I've just joined a board of a company called Wolf & Shepherd. Um, it's, a, it's a shoe brand um, based in, in Los Angeles. Um, so all those roles keep me busy and, and speaking on, on panels like here. So you get to travel around the world and bring your family you know, alongside the adventures. Oh, it's so fun. It's a great adventure. Yes. Um, and I think, you know, it's, it's interesting to think about now that layer for you, right, as you are doing more board work, investing, being very choiceful. Um, how does that, how do you, like, if health and wellness is important to you, right, like, how do you, you're representing it on the outside, how do you end up taking care of yourself and all of that, right, because... Um, you were a competitive athlete for, you know, a really yes. hardcore competitive athlete, like yes. your whole life. <laughs> well, the first year after retirement, we were all in COVID. We're all working out from our basements and our living rooms. And God, I was so diligent. And then I got pregnant. <laughs> and then, yeah, that'll and do. Then <laughs> things slightly change um, and you find those little excuses. But I do the one thing that I, I really miss um, from the days of, of playing and practicing every day was was having like this uniform that I put on, like my training gear 
that just, it, I, all of a sudden, I like switched this button and I was in my, in, in the zone. We're in the game. I was yeah, in, the in the zone. zone. Like yeah. at 7.30 awesome. a.m., I would put on my gear and I felt like there was this, this purpose. Um, so I, I miss that feeling. I miss the teamwork. I try to create that when you say like, what's next? I try to create that with, with the founders that I meet. Like, are these people, like Natalie and her husband, Max, are these people I want to sit at a dinner table with? and grow the business while we're having a meal. Like, are the, these are people I'm gonna see every single week that I'm gonna talk to, that I'm gonna speak through. How are they gonna do when things are tough? So yeah, those are all the things that I, that I consider and, and that now apply to my life. I mean, relationships, right, are kind of everything <laughs> with everybody. Absolutely. We're all here everyone, because, yes, right? Yes, um, yes. It is your team, it is, you know, yeah. keeps you And I've really, th that's the one thing I've really enjoyed, um, you know, after finishing my career was, actually getting to meet people in a different context, like having, when I would come to an event, like a, which most, most of the time was a sponsor event, it was a, whether it was a meet and greet or a panel like this, my number one goal was if I had a match tomorrow was go home and recover, right? Or go home and do treatment or go home and practice. And now I get to actually share my story, I get to speak to people, I get to interact with them. And I know there's, it, it feels like there's a, a different dimension to life, which is a very, um, which is a perspective that I just didn't allow myself to have because I was so focused on recovery and training and performing at the highest level. Which you're sort of doing now, right? In a different way, right? Yes. But like, and it's you're infusing balance. it in all these things, it's right? It's a fine balance. But even like recovery, right? The ability to give yourself permission, yes. you know, to... Yes to be comfortable saying oh i'm if i'm leaving the house it's for this reason right like yeah, i, I find stuff. it i find it amazing how everyone's like when you ask what you're up to you always have to have an answer that you're on the go that you're yeah. doing something that you're going somewhere and that's what makes it interesting there are times where i just want to say no like right now I'm, I'm taking care of myself or i'm taking care of my family and this is the time for me and it's not an excuse it's just that, that no that's, it's what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's but, a choice of what you're doing. But I think because we have so many distractions in, in life and in, and in general and social media and we see something and, and the perception of another person's life um, immediately makes us feel like we're not doing enough, which is a very false assumption. <laughs> so to clear that up, I think it's, it's important to do things on your, on your timetable and not somebody else's. Do you find that people feel like they know you because you have been, you know, like, there's a sense of familiarity around you where they're Which like... Which I like. You like I that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I, I feel like when you're an athlete, you form a connection with, with people and fans. And, and uh, you know, I realized this when I was a little bit older, but ultimately I was, I was an entertainer. It w I wasn't just doing this for myself to win, but when I went on the court and I was having a really bad day, there could be somebody in the audience that was having a bad day themselves. And if I could turn that match around, if I could come through and show them that on a bad day I was able to win or I was able to, to improve in front of their eyes, imagine how that they'll go to sleep and think, yeah. okay, well, I, I had a tough day, but this athlete in front of thousands of people was able to turn it around and inspired me to do that tomorrow. So that impact, um, you try to forget it because it's, it's like there's a lot of pressure with it, um, but ultimately it's such a beautiful feeling to have that you can have that inspiration on other people. Yeah, and it is inspiring. I mean, to watch someone fight through kind of the mental and emotional, yeah. the, that toughness is, I mean, Un Even though if you think yeah. about it, everyone in the stadium is, yeah. you know, looks Rooting. beautiful yeah, yeah. and is there, you know, is probably there socially yeah. and there's these two athletes that are going up against yeah. each other and it's, you know, they're sweating, they're fighting, something's not working well, yeah. the other one's on a confident run. Like yeah. that battle is so much fun to witness. Yeah. Oh, it's a delight, right? Like the, and, and I love the enthusiasm around tennis. I feel like we've come like yeah. a full circle and stadiums are like fun. Tennis Again. inspires so many different yeah. walks of life, fashion, culture, yeah. athletes. It's, yeah. Yeah. It, it's really, it, it was hard for me to understand that when I was playing, and I see that so much more now. Well, because, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were the one. <laughs> I get to see it from a, a small distance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, we have now, that was a very fast 
20 minutes. It went very fast. Was it? Okay. it was oh, funny. Okay. I know. They're like, you have 20 minutes, Shannon. And I'm like, okay. They're like, no, you really have 20 minutes. Well, thank you for being um, here, everyone. So thank, thank you. you. For, yes, this is so much fun. Maria Sharapova, fun everybody. Thank you for bringing me to Con. And yes. thank you to our Stagwell team for Let's go for a swim. All together. <laughs> Let's go for a swim. Um, right. Amazing. I love that. Give it up one more time, everyone. Well done, guys. Well done, well done.